Spanish missions here, nowhere else in the United States, is because this was the second entry point for the Spanish to, to arrive. No other place in the southwestern part, the Midwest, was yet to be explored. This was it. <coughs> 1492, Christopher Columbus discovers the New World. Three European countries would explore the New World in the 1500s. The English, the French, and the Spanish. The English were the first to start the exploration of the New World. 1502, the King of England sends a contingent of Spanish, uh, English explorers. As the English arrived from the Atlantic Ocean, when they started arriving and claiming land, they wanted to explore the northeastern part of what is today the United States. Of course, the English founded the colony of Jamestown in 1607 and the 13 colonies. So the English are there exploring the northeastern part. Spain was the second country to start the exploration of the New World. 1513, Queen Isabel, King Frederick V, King and Queen of Spain, sent a well-known explorer by the name of Ponce de Leon. As arrived from the Atlantic Ocean, they started arriving and claimed land for the King of Spain in what is today the state of Florida. As the Spanish arrived into that area, they claimed land for the King of Spain and they built the first mission, the oldest mission in the United States, St. Augustine. But the Spanish decide right there, decide to stay right there. They don't venture out further to explore the New World in 1513. Why? Because they're searching for the fountain of youth. They had heard from previous explorations that the fountain of youth could be in that particular area of the New World. So the Spanish stay there for eight years, searching, searching for the fountain of youth. That's a pretty good way to hide. They never find it. I wish they had it, it would have benefited all of us. But they stay there for eight years. Because they stay there for eight years, now it gives an opportunity for the French to start their empire. The King of France knows that the English are up in the northeastern part. He knows that the Spanish are not venturing out further to explore the New World. So 1521, the King of England, uh, the King of France, sends a contingent of French explorers to start the exploration of the New World. As the French arrive, as the French arrive from the Atlantic Ocean, well, they know they can't come into the northeastern part or through, or through Florida because the Spanish and the English are there. So they decide to take a different route. They enter what is today the Gulf of Mexico. As the French arrive into that area, they start arriving and claiming land for the King of, England, uh, sorry, the King of France in what is today the states of Mississippi and Louisiana. Many more French explorers arrive start claiming land for the King of France. Now the King of France wasn't going to stay put. He wanted more land to claim in that area, naturally. So the latter part of 1521, he sends a well-known explorer by the name of La Salle. As La Salle arrives into that area, he decides to go up what is today the Mississippi River. As he explores the Mississippi River Valley, he claims a huge amount of land for the King of France. Now the French have a pretty good foothold of that area in 1521, which is today mainly the southeastern part of what is today the United States. Because the Spanish are what is today the state of Florida, after eight years they find no fountain of youth. They decide that eight years would be enough. As they venture out eight years later, 1521, they start that they see exactly what the 1521 as they venture out. They see exactly what the French are up to and what they're doing. So now they want to get in on the act too. They want to claim land, riches, and possibly gold just the same. So Queen Isabel, Queen Isabel King Ferdinand V, decide to counter the French. Otherwise, they would have claimed a huge amount of land. Can't happen. In order to counter them, they said. They sent a contingent of French, uh, Spanish imports to counter the French. Same year, 1521. Same way, the Spanish enter the Gulf of Mexico. As the Spanish enter the Gulf of Mexico in 1521, they start, they know where the French are. They don't bother them at that moment in time. They do later on, but not at that particular moment in time. All the Spanish do is continue sailing in the Gulf of Mexico. <coughs> They continue sailing in the Gulf of Mexico. 
take over the French army, they don't bother them, they do later on. So, so as, as, they, as they continue sailing in the Gulf of Mexico, several weeks later, they hit land. And that land today is the coastal plains of what's today Texas. As they arrive into that area, they come into three distinct areas in the Gulf. What's today, Manicouin Bay, Corpus Christi Bay, Galveston Bay. They start searching for the coastal plains of what's today Texas. They find nothing in that area. Very disappointed that they continue their exploration of that area. As many more Spanish explorers arrived in 1521 to claim more land for the King of Spain in the coastal plains of what's today Texas. One of the questions that is always asked of me is people want to know. Why did the Spanish decide to explore this particular area of the New World in 1521, which is today mainly the state of Texas? Otherwise, the Spanish would have been able to explore any other area of the New World. Tremendous amount of land, vast land in 1521. Well, the archives that the Spanish left us with, and they left us with a whole mess of archives, told us the reason they chose this particular area of 1521 as their main exploration point was because they knew that the French right next door. They wanted to make sure that the French did not encroach into this area of the New World in Otherwise, the French would have come into this area, export the whole southwestern part, the Midwest, and we'd be all speaking French in this area today. And that's why they chose this area, to keep them out. That's why Spanish missions from California to Texas exist today. But the missions in California, Arizona, and New Mexico were not built until 30 years after these were built right here. These were the first to be built because this was the second anchor point for the Spanish to come in. The Spanish controlled the southwestern part of the Midwest. The French controlled the southeast or controlled the southeastern part of Louisiana and Mississippi, and the English in the northeastern part of what is today the United States. Now this particular area right here had not yet been explored by the Spaniards, only the coastal plains of what is today Texas. So 1521, Queen Isabel, King Frank V, wanted to explore the southern half of what is today Texas, the northern half of what is today Mexico. They wanted to explore that area too by previous explorations. Now it was called Mexico 500 years ago. It was called Mexica. So in order to do that, they sent a well-known explorer by the name of Hernán Cortés. Hernán Cortés leaves Spain in 1520 with a force of 500 men, 14 ships, tremendous amount of men and equipment to explore this area right here, keep the French out, continue exploration. Now we have the maps, we have the archives. Hernán Cortés arrives in the Gulf of Mexico in 1521, a year later comes into the port city of Veracruz, Mexico, comes inland. He was supposed to travel northward and explore this area right here, with 500 men, in order to keep the French out and continue exploration. But he never arrived here, never did, as he was supposed to. Now, before I tell you why he was not able to come here, I want you to know this. And not Cortes, when he leaves Spain in 1520, he brings 14 ships. 500 men. On those 14 ships he brought, he brought arms, horses, cattle, and supplies in last the year. And Nan Cortes was the first to introduce horses into North America. There were no horses here 500 years later. 500 years later, many types, many Greeks. So now, Hernán um, so, Cortes and the Spanish were the first to introduce horses into North America. 500 years later, many types, many breeds. The Spanish were responsible for bringing horses into North America. Now, as the Spanish arrived here later on, they bring their cattle with them that they brought on their ships with Hernán Cortés. As the Spanish arrive into this area and explore this area, they're amazed that they find wild cattle here. Amazingly, there's wild cattle here possibly from thousands of years before. Now, in the archives that the Spanish left us with, do not tell us what type of cattle was here. They just mentioned that it's wild cattle. So we don't know what type. So as they find the wild cattle here and they bring their cattle from Spain on their ships, they start breeding the two. As they bred the two, it produced what is today, the Longhorn of Texas. 500 years later, we still have 
alternative text. And again, cannot put this who's responsible for that. Now, the reason he was not able to come here is this. As Hernán Cortés arrives in the Gulf of Mexico, 1521, comes into the port city of Veracruz, Mexico, comes inland. Now he encounters one of the most advanced civilizations in the new world in 1521, the Aztec Empire, whose leader is Montezuma. So that's why he was not able to come here. Otherwise, he would have been able to come here with. He was supposed to, sent by Queen Isabel, King Ferdinand V. Now, you have to realize this, that as Hernán Cortés arrives with 500 people, Spanish people, and they encounter the Aztecs, the Aztec people had never seen light-skinned European people before. In their mindset, in their way of thinking 500 years ago, when the Aztecs saw them coming in, they thought that they were gods coming in to help and save their civilization. That's what their mindset was 500 years ago. Why? Because they were experiencing problems. You see, the Aztec Empire, they, they, they were dying. They were dying for lack of rainfall. They had no water. Why? Because the Aztec Empire was built on a lake bed, on an island, which is still true today of Mexico City. That's why some of their older buildings crumble over time. It is built on a lake bed. And you have to also realize this, that these Aztec people had a vision that one day a God would arrive to help and save their civilization. And now Cortes arrives, 1521, he's the God they're searching for, and they treat him as such. But you also have to realize this, that as the Spanish arrived in 1521 and encountered the Aztecs, and now Cortes and the Spanish saw a huge city a huge Aztec city of gold and riches, a city of over 200,000 Aztec people. The Spanish had never seen a city that size, not even in Spain in 1521, much less a city of gold and riches. So now, Hernán Cortés conspires with his men to kill Montezuma. And they kill Montezuma and his warriors, principally for the gold and the riches. As they kill Montezuma, the Aztec people have no leader, they fall apart. The Spanish conquer them, completely destroy the Aztec Empire. They were no match to the Spaniards. They had brought arms and they had brought horses with them. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, how could 500 Spanish explorers or people destroy a civilization of 200,000 Aztecs? Well, the archives tells us this, that the Spanish had a lot of help. Other civilizations lived around the Aztecs. Well, they hated the Aztecs. Why? Because they were using their people to sacrifice to the gods, to their gods. Mm -hmm. They hated the Aztecs. So he was able to get the help of those civilizations in the conquering of the Aztecs. And that's how he was able to do it. Now, Hernán Cortés was very shrewd. He wanted to continue the Spanish conquest of the Americas. He found the gold and the riches in those in the Aztecs. He figured there'd be more civilizations to conquer and destroy for more gold and riches. That's what he was after in the New World. But by that time, the 500 men that he brought with him were starting to revolt, protest. They wanted to go back to the homeland of Spain. They had enough of the Spanish conquest. So what Hernán Cortés does to keep those men from going back he assigned several of his men that are loyal to him to go back to the port city of Veracruz, Mexico, where all 14 ships are anchored. And he has them destroy, burn them to the ground, so that no one would ever go back to their homeland again. And they never did. They never did. Several years later, Hernán Cortés meets his fate. The men kill him for what he did to them. He's buried today in the Socolo of Mexico City. But Hernán Cortés and other Spanish explorers that came in, had Juan Pizarro, other explorers, into the late 1500s, early 1600s, along with the Aztec Empire. Hernán Cortés and the Spanish conquered and destroyed the Mayan civilization, the Olmec civilization, the Inca civilization, other civilizations along the way. You can come in. 
So now the Spanish controlled in 1521 what is today South America, Central America, Mexico, and the bottom half of Southwestern North America and the Midwest in North America. Because the Spanish established their empire or the capital city of New Spain in what is today Mexico City in 1521 after the destruction of the Aztec Empire. Because we're less than 650 miles away here from Mexico City, this is the next entry point for the Spanish to come in. No other place in the southwestern part, the Midwest, or what is today the United States, is yet to be explored in 1521 by anyone. This is it. 162 Spanish explorers, accompanied by seven Franciscan friars, arrived here in August of 1521. When they arrive here, they find no golden riches here. There is no golden riches here. But what they find here is much more important to them than gold and riches. First, the Spanish find and discover a huge limestone rock quarry, which is today right in front of this church. Still there. It hasn't been used in over 300 years. Pretty well filled in. But it was huge and exposed when the Spanish arrived here. It was like it was put there for them to find. Five Spanish missions and the only Spanish aqueduct ever built by the Spaniards anywhere in North America still standing between the last two missions. It is the oldest irrigation system in, North, in the United States and in North America. We're built strictly from that single limestone rock quarry right there in front of this church. So you know it had to be huge. That's what these five missions in the Spanish aqueduct are made on, limestone rock. Now one of the things that really amazes us in these missions is that no mission, no churches have any framework. It's all limestone rock from that quarry right there in front. Not a single framework to these missions. All five. All five of them. If you were to fly over the city today, you would see many pockets of limestone rock quarries scattered all over the city. Limestone rock is very natural, very abundant in this area. Anywhere you dig in the ground, you will hit limestone rock. We get our water from the underground, the underground aquifer. As the rain seeps to the limestone rock, we get our pure drinking water. And we have many natural caverns that surround the city that you can visit today. Beautiful natural caverns because of the abundance of limestone rock in this area. If you have a chance, go visit the largest cavern in the state of Texas. It's only 25 minutes from here. On I-35, if you Google it, it will, it's called Natural Bridge Caverns. Amazing, amazing cavern. Second, the Spanish find and discover a huge river, less than a half a mile from here. Source of life. It is recorded from the, from the archives that the Spanish left us with that this area had many springs and many rivers, and this river had an abundance of water 500 years ago when they found this river right here. They find the, the headwaters for this river a mile and a half north of where the Mission Alamo stands today. And in Spanish, they name it Aguas de San Pedro, San Pedro Springs. Well, 500 years later, that water still comes right out of that spring. It comes right out. Not as plentiful as 500 years ago, but still comes right out. It feeds this river. This river spring fed, empties into the Gulf of Mexico. And this river today is the San Antonio River. This, this spring is the one that feeds the river walk downtown. It is not a natural river. It's a spring fed river. It has never dried up. That's how the river walk downtown is. Yes, never has dried up. And lo and behold, to their amazement, to their surprise, unexpectedly, they also find and discover 30 native tribes that live on the banks of this river. Hunter-gatherers that roam the plains of what's today Texas for thousands of years. The Spanish were amazed and they were surprised because in their exploration of what is today Texas, the coastal plains, they found nothing. They come here and they find 30 native tribes of many, many different dialects. Why? The river, source of life. You can sit down, serve your life. Okay. Doing pretty good. <laughs> uh, 
Friars tells us that this area had many springs and many rivers. That's why the local native people inhabited this area for thousands of years. Now, as I mentioned to you, 53 years ago, we were able to go through all 670 some odd books that the Friars left us and these five Spanish missions here. Amazing documentation of how life evolved on these five missions here. These books are that long, that, that high. They are under lock and key. They're over 300 years old. We have them under lock and key. We don't let anyone go through them. They're over 300 years old. We got them in a special vault, air conditioned, all 670 some odd books. As we went through them 53 years ago, we were astonished that the fires actually left us a recorded number. They actually left a recorded number that consisted of 30 tribes. Almost 10,000 native people. Huge, huge as Spanish are related. They find exactly what they were searching for in the New World. They find the gold and the riches in the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Olmecs, the Incas. That's why the Spanish Inquisition occurred. Now they come here and they find 10,000 souls in which to convert into the Spanish way of life. How lucky could they have gotten? They found exactly what they were searching for in the New World. Now, I'll give you four of the 30 names that lived here. Nowhere, nowhere to be found in any history book. I'll give you four of 30. The Pajalache Indian tribe, of which I'm a direct descendant of. The Alanamas Indian tribe. The Payaya Indian tribe and the Guawitican group of tribes. The Guawitican group of tribes consisted of 15 tribes. And they had migrated from the interior of what is today Mexico into this area thousands of years before because of the river. They lived on the banks of this river and they were to be known as Guawiticans. They came from an area in Mexico and it's now called Guawila. That's why they were called Guawiticans. Now 300 some odd years later, only 12 of 30 tribes survived. In my tribe, the Pahalacha tribe, we only have 65 remaining descendants. As a little boy, they took my DNA from the remains they found at this church. I am a direct descendant of the Pahalacha tribe that the Spanish found here 500 years ago. Because of our recorded history for 600 years and beyond, and because of our recorded language for 600 years and beyond, I can speak 98% of our language. We continue with our little ones to make sure our culture, our religion, language never dies out. But we only have 65 remaining descendants. Hopefully we don't disappear. That's why Queen Isabel, King Ferdinand V said, what? Start the Spanish Empire right here. Keep the French out, which was a principal reason to explore this area in the first place. At the same time, teach the gospel of the Lord. And birth these 10,000 native people into the Spanish way of life, make them Spanish citizens. That's why they sent builders, engineers, designers, craftsmen of all types, soldiers, explorers, and Franciscan friars. Now they start the foundation of these five Spanish missions here. There was to be a sixth mission built, but they decided that five would be enough. Every, all five missions were built strictly for the conversion of souls, nothing more. Each mission was to be built on the east bank of the river. They lived on the east bank of the river. Of course, over 300 years, the river had been diverted times. Each mission was to be built within a mile to three miles apart, close proximity for the simple reason of converting 10,000 native people. 1630, Mission San Francisco de la Espada, the further southern mission. 1640, Mission San Juan Capristano, this one here, 1710. Mission Nuestra Señora de la Purísima Concepción de Acuña, Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. 1718, Mission San Antonio de Valero, in honor of the Spanish Viceroy at that time. Today, it is commonly known as the Alamo. And the last mission they built, 1720, Mission San Jose, in San Miguel de Cuevo, in the missions. Now, now 10,000 native people, not all of them, were converted, only half of them. Why? Because as they came into these five Spanish missions here, every mission had walls, but the fires would not let them out, only on special occasions. Well, they were not used to that, they were outdoors people, and the fires were very harsh on them. They didn't treat them very well, they were indigenous people. So many would escape back into the wilderness, continue the way of life. 
The friars had to go further into the wilderness to get more converts to come in. Otherwise, these five missions would not have survived. And they did for 85 years. At which time, 1820, Mexico declares its independence from Spain. The Spanish are driven off. This becomes Mexico here. Now, Mexico in 1820 was Mexico, Texas, all the way to Washington State. That's the country of Mexico in 1820. Now, what really surprises us is that these five missions are still here. Why? Because Mexico did not want anything to do with these five missions here. They were built by the Spanish. We see Mexico and Spain do not see eye to eye because of the Spanish Inquisition that occurred there, the destruction of the Aztec Empire. Last year was the 500th anniversary of the Spanish Inquisition. Mexico sent a letter to the King of Spain asking for apologies for the Spanish Inquisition. Spain sent a letter back. They will not apologize. You see, they, they do not see eye to eye. Mexico could have very easily destroyed these five missions here. Thank goodness all five of them are still here. Now, 10,000 native people, as I said, not all of them were converted. Now, King Philip V, King of Spain, decides that he wants to start a settlement here. He wants to start a settlement here because the Spanish are building their empire, they're building the five Spanish missions here. So what he does, he commissions 56 families from the Canary Islands on the coast of Africa. It is a possession of the Spanish crown, still is today. Think about it, 56 families willing to come to a new world in 1718, not knowing what to expect, but they came. All 56 families arrived here on June the 13th of 1718, and they arrived on the day of the Feast of St. Anthony the Father. They immediately start the building of the town. As they built the town, they named the town Presidio de San Antonio de Bejar. Bejar is a Spanish name for the Spanish writers at that time. Today, we still use that name, Bear County. Bear in English, Bejar in Spanish. San Antonio is a Spanish name for St. Anthony. And that's how the town and the city received its name in honor of St. Anthony, San Antonio. Today, you can actually visit the original settlement of San Antonio. The houses are still there, built out of limestone rock by the Canary Islanders. San Antonio preserves all of its past. It is called La Villita, Little Village. It's right across Hemisphere Park where the tower is. That was a 1968 World's Fair that we had here. Across the street is the original settlement of San Antonio. They made them into arts and crafts restaurants, but you could walk in and actually see those houses built in 1718. The town was built on the west side of the river. The missions were built on the east side of the river. They built a town, they built a church in 1718 and they named the church San Fernando Church in honor of St. Ferdinand. It is the oldest sanctuary cathedral in the United States and the oldest in the state of Texas. If you have a chance, go visit that. It's right on the river, right in the middle of downtown, on the river, everything was built on the river. If you're a history buff, as you walk into the left side of that church, there's a tomb there, and that tomb contains the remains of Davy Crockett, Jim Bowie, and William Barrett Travis, three men who died, fought at the Battle of the Alamo. Santa Ana never burned those three men. He spared them. He knew their backgrounds. He, he burned the rest of the defenders, but not those three men. Crockett was a congressman and a frontiersman. Bowie was a Mexican citizen. He became a Mexican citizen because in 1835, he married into a very influential family here in San Antonio called the Benamendis. He married Ursula Benamendi and the Church of San Fernando Church in 1835. And Travis was a commander of the mission. So he spared those three. After the battle, the Mexican people came back into the town. They knew who they were because they mingled in the town of San Antonio. They gathered the remains. And on March the 6th of 1836, they buried them in the sacrament of San Fernando Church. March the 6th of 1936, 100 years later, they exhumed their remains, built that tomb, and that's where the remains are today. They built the town, they built a church. Today you can visit the Spanish governor's palace behind the church. It is a museum, and it was built by the Spanish in 1718 in order to house the provincial government of Spanish New Spain, Texas. Now the consequences of teaching the gospel of the Lord of our lives was this. With the merging of the Spanish Empire and the merging of the 10,000 native people that lived on the banks of this river, they merged and created 
a new mixed race of people, and they were to be known as Tejanos, which is only found here in Texas and South Texas. The name Tejanos originated from the thousands of native people that lived on the banks of this river in their native tongues. In my native tongue, they named this area Tejas, which means friendship. They were friendly tribes. And of course, the English derivative name for that today is Texas. And that's how the name originated for the new mixed race people. And that's how the town and the city grew to what it is today. A city 1.8 million strong, still growing, seventh largest city in the United States, second largest in the state of Texas. 2018, we celebrated our tricentennial, 300 years of existence from 1718 to 2018, now more than 300 years old. Now, what I want you to know too is this, New Orleans, Louisiana, also celebrated their 300 years of existence. As the French arrived into that area in 1521, they founded and established the town of New Orleans. As the Spanish arrived into this area in 1521, they founded and established the town of San Antonio. That's why San Antonio and New Orleans, Louisiana, both celebrated their 300 years of existence together under the French and under the Spanish influence. And that's the reason that we have five Spanish missions here this close together, nowhere else in the United States, nowhere else in North America. And that's the history of the missions.